I mean, that was the thing last year for a lot of the year. I don't think our backfield had driver's license, and I only think two of our linemen have driver's license. At one point last year in the Bowling Green game, we had seven sophomores, a freshman, uh, two juniors, and one senior on the field. What may sound a little on first blush, a bit like David Kirby offering excuses, was actually the Monroe City Skipper's response to a question on why he was so positively energized for the Panthers' first fall workout on Monday. Justifiably so when you consider that last fall saw what was the age equivalent of a Monroe City Junior Varsity squad win 8 of 11 contests within the rough and tumble Clarence Cannon. Well, the kids are battle tested. They took a lot of good repetitions last year and I'm excited for that. Um, you know, we've been very blessed over the years to have a lot of older kids be able to play a lot and it takes a little bit for our younger kids to get those reps on Friday night. Last year we were put in a position where we had a lot of sophomores and some freshmen getting playing time, so I think that's really going to help us this year. They're not going to be as shocked as what they're going to see on Friday nights, and hopefully it allows them to just play fast and free, and we're really excited for them to have that opportunity this year. I'd remind you that the relative lumps and growing pains that the Panthers did suffer last fall came all at the hands of three state-ranked powers, and on balance expedited player development in Titletown. And if you know anything at all about the MC coaching staff, player development is their football love language. The expectation being that this MC squad should be improved absolutely everywhere, including in a loaded run game headlined by Quincy Mayfield. Uh, definitely, yeah. I'm a little bigger. I mean, everybody's getting older, so it's just another year experience for everybody. Whew, he's pretty good. Um, I think the big thing for Quincy is just being able to complete four quarters at a high level all the time. Uh, that was one of the things last year, especially early on, you know, there was some cramp issues, things like that. So how he can maintain his body physically, you know, can he be in great shape? Can he continue to be a hard-nosed blocker and runner for four quarters? And he showed a lot of good glimpses of that last year. Now we're just trying to see if he can elevate that and be one of those kind of dominant backs in the area, and we'll see. And bolstered by the intriguing returns as well of Dylan Ross and Jaden Holland. We've got two other backs that are going to be able to carry the load for him or help carry the load for us with Jaden and Dylan. And, you know, that's the fun part about our offense is one person doesn't have to do it all. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we didn't have that many seniors, and we're returning them basically everybody. So we all grew and we all got more talented. So, yeah. I mean, we got a bunch of athletic guys. I mean, everybody's going to be able to play a different type of role, and we're pretty fast in the backfield, and it's just more dynamic. And to the benefit of those backs on the offensive line as well. I think they've improved a lot. You know, we got, they're not as big, I feel like, as last year, but we still got, we have small, fast, and just guys ready to do the job. They're a year older. They've put time in the weight room. They've put time coming to our, you know, this past spring, working in track, getting faster. This summer, working on speed. So I'm excited for him. And just to be certain of optimizing his attack, David Kirby did a little position swapping this offseason with Wyatt DeGrave and former starting quarterback Trey Smizer. We moved Trey to a receiver and also a running back. We want to try to get the ball to him a little bit more in open space, utilize his athletic ability. Also, Wyatt DeGrave um, has matured physically. He's an excellent football player. Obviously, he's got a great understanding. You know, his family is a, a, is a pretty knowledgeable football family. So he's had a great summer. Those two have worked extremely well together. You know, there are a lot of times that they were just up here running routes, going through things. And also, it gives us a luxury because we have some other sets where Marty will be our quarterback. And it's exciting to see how they're just playing together. So I'm excited how that backfield bring everybody back. Um, it was eerie how balanced we were. Uh, I think one kid had 850, the other kid had 840, and then the other kid had 810, and their running back or their touchdown totals were pretty similar as well. So we do have kind of a, I'd say a four-headed attack. We run the spread, baby. I spread the ball around to a lot of people. The Panthers' defense stands to be nastier on balance as well. This year, I think we're going to try to really capitalize on those good moments and not really look on the bad moments, especially last year I feel like we would look down on the bad moments and that would bring us down, but I think this year we'll have a lot of good moments and that we look forward to. Which looms large as the Panthers aren't ducking anyone right out of the gate. 
with Montgomery County, South Shelby, and Centralia in the first four weeks of the season, as well as perennial powerhouse Valley Catholic on tap for week number one. A big game coming from the start, so we'll see where we're at and where we can improve from, from that game.